Namaste students, I am Zubin Dr. Ajiz Mohamad Khan from Department of Food and Biotechnology, Faculty of Agriculture and Veterinary Science, Jyoti Vidyapit, Women's University, Jaipur. Today, I am going to discuss about the topic, Classification and Identification of Yeast, the part number two of the yeast. And uh, in previous video, I discussed about the general introduction about the yeast, more morphological characteristics of the yeast. And, uh, this video, I'm going to discuss about the classification of the uh, yeast. So, the principal base of the identification and classification of gender of yeast are some characters. The first one is the ascospores. Uh, yeast are producing uh, some ascospores that can be identified easily. Okay. And if they are Spore forming, they are also identified. The first one is ascospore forming. So, we discussed about the ascospores in previous video. And the second thing is if they are spore forming or not. Okay. And this is the method for identification of the yeast. The method of production of ascospores, okay, it is identified by the method of the production of the Ascospores and uh, they are produced without conjugation of these cells. Okay. And spore formation may be uh, conducted by some methods like they can the spores can be formed by conjugation of the score. We discuss about the ascospores conjugation with some pictures also. So the Escort spores may conjugate with each other and they can be produced some more spores. Okay. First chance conjugation of escort spores. The second chance, okay, how they can produce spores. The yeast can produce spores by conjugation of small water cells. If two small water cells are conjugate with each other, they can produce small, they can produce escort spores. And uh, conjugation is a very important process in uh, escort spores or, and also on the water cell. So two modes are for the production of the escort spores by conjugation of the other. And uh, so these are the two methods. And, uh, Second thing, first one was the conjugation, and the second is thing is that they can produce the ascospores can be produced after isogamy conjugation. Okay, first one was the simple conjugation. Okay, and the ascospores can also be produced by isogamy conjugation means the conjugating cells appear like similar. They look like similar. Okay. So these are the two methods of the spore formation. Uh, the third one is uh, the score force may be produced by heterochemic conjugation. Okay. What is the heterochemic conjugation? Conjugation cells are different in appearance. Means the conjugation may be between the cells which are different in their appearance. So this is the third. Fourth number, which may be and the, the, the appearance of a score spores, shape, size, and color. Okay, it may be different. We can identify one by these characters. And most spores are spheroid or wood, and some may have odd shape. Okay. And the usual number of score spores per escus can be used. Number of ascospores can be used for the identification of these yeast cells. Okay, and there may be one ascospore, two ascospore, three ascospore, four ascospore. If we can count them and then we can identify this, that which species will belong to what particular kind of yeast. Okay, and uh, three appearance of vegetative cells, so shape, size, and color are used for the identification of that. Yeast. 
the method of asexual production is also important what are the method of the sexual reproduction it is may be budding it may be fission it may be produced by uh, combined budding and fission okay two methods can be there and the asexual sexual reproduction can also be done by orthospores so these are the methods of the asexual reproduction and uh, then production of these orthospores may be by mycelium pseudo mycelium or from without mycelium they can also be found with mycelium they can be identified by the presence of the mycelium they may have a mycelium they may not have pseudo mycelium they may not have so what are the characteristics which we discussed the first characteristic which we were discussing which we were discussing about the escorts who are formed or not okay this is a common characteristic second characteristic are are they forming spores on that characteristic which can identify third one is there any conjugation okay there can be heterogamy conjugation there may be some heterogamy conjugation between the yeast so that was the third number of uh, characteristic for the identification of the yeast and the fourth number the method of reproduction in which we can say that uh, what are the methods with, between the yeast which by which we can identify the yeast by reproduction in asexual mode which may be budding fission or combined method of the budding fission and arthrospores fifth number is production of mycelium okay some uh, yeast produce mycelium and some yeast do not produce any mycelium okay if they are not producing they can be separated okay that's it but if they are producing what kind of mycelium they are producing If they are producing, they, is, it, is it true mycelium? Is it a false mycelium? So they are producing so false mycelium. They are not the pseudo mycelium. Six number growth is a film over surface of a liquid. What are the? They can be identified by the characteristic of their growth on the liquid media. If they are producing any film on the surface, if they are producing a Film on the surface, then it means they are oxidative. They are not producing on film on the surface, and they are distributed inside the growth. Uh, they are the fermentative. Okay, they are also identified by the color of the microscopic growth. These are also identified by the color of the microscopic growth, and these are also identified by the physiological characteristics like. Uh, And we will differentiate species or strains with the species. So these are the characteristics of the identity. These are also identified by the physiological characteristics. So which are the physiological characteristics? The first one is the nitrogen and carbon source. Okay, which source it is using? If they are using nitrogen source, carbon source. Okay. So these are the physiological characteristics which can be used for the identification of particular kind of yeast. Okay, and these are all are the basis of the classification of also. They are the basis of the classification of the yeast also. I suppose that uh, if uh, there is a yeast that we want to identify and it is it has the capability to utilize carbon. so we can prepare the media and screen the yeast that it is producing any kind of spores in the carbon containing media or it is it is uh, being go it is showing its growth on the carbon containing media so these are the some characteristic by which we can identify by the culture media the first one is the requirement of the vitamin some yeast require Vitamins for the growth, so we can separate them. Uh, we can also identify the yeast by their oxidative or fermentation mode. We know that oxidative yeast will produce film on the surface of the uh, growth media, and uh, 
Sunlight at the waist will not produce any kind of uh, film on the surface and it will be distributed on the media. The last is lipolysis. Okay, this is also physiological characteristics. Physiologic, physiological characteristics which include the lipolysis means that some of the yeast have lipolytic activity. They can lyse the lipid also. So we can also identify by the lipolytic activity. We can also identify the yeast by the UGS activity. They also have UGS activity. So we can also identify some yeast have UGS, some yeast do not have UDI utilizing activity. Some yeast can produce acid, so they can be identified. Okay. And some of the yeast can produce starts like compounds. So these are the characteristics by which we can identify the yeast on the suitable culture media in liquid forms. So these all are the characteristics for the identification of the yeast. So this is all about the um, some identification of the yeast. So my lecture is over here. If you have any query, you can ask me. So in the next video, I will discuss about the classification of yeast and also examples of the yeast classification. So my lecture is over here. If you have any query, you can ask me. So thank you very much. What kind of questions which can be asked? In, according to this uh, it can be asked that what are the characteristics by which the yeast can be identified. So I explained in this video eight different type of characteristics by which we can identify yeast. So you can ask me everything about that. So the YouTube video will be uploaded and uh, can also ask me questions in the comments. Thank you very much.